Welcome back, everybody. Bungie's GDC lecture on character customization was released yesterday, and I have prepared a summary for all of you. The link to the lecture is in the description. We start with Master Chief. Bungie's character customization starts with Halo and this iconic figure. Halo was great because Master Chief was faceless. You could put yourself in the character. But they wanted something new and unique for Destiny while still keeping that you are the hero feeling. To succeed, they needed a deep customization experience. They drew inspiration from the power fantasies like space marines, cowboys, pirates, etc. and created the classes that we know today. They started with the head, chest, arms, legs, and gave each class a different shape to differentiate them. They added the fifth armor slot, which is the class slot, to each class to make them feel more unique. The hunter's cloak, the titan's badge, and the warlock's bond or arm band. The hunter is the frontier scout. They are hacker cowboys, recon snipers, and bounty hunters. They scavenge gear from the wild and they have a very scrappy or almost haphazard look. Their armor is lightweight because mobility is important. Warlocks are warrior scholars. They want answers to the mystery of the Traveler. They're very secretive, mysterious, and can use the Traveler's powers in a much greater fashion than the other classes. They rely more on abilities than others, but still wear somewhat durable armor. Titans are based on the Knights of Old, very noble and brave and have sworn to protect the city. They are the most heavily armored of the classes. They wear tight-fitting suits layered with heavy metal plates. Their armor is inspired by medieval armor. The badge is like a tabard that old knights used to wear. But after the classes were designed, where could they go from there? There were still many questions. What could different versions of the classes look like? How can we make a system around this customization? Halo Reach featured a unique system. You could pick different details on your helm, and for Destiny this would be extended to other armor slots. However, this Halo Reach system wasn't efficient enough for the artists on Destiny. The sheer volume of content meant they needed to change their game plan. During Halo Reach, someone accidentally put add-ons meant for one helmet onto another, but it worked. It could quickly Z-buffer to make new variants, and if you understand what that means, good, I guess. Thus, Scott built a mock-up based off of this accident for a system of building pieces of armor quickly and efficiently in Destiny. This image features 25 pieces for 12 very distinct helmets. Their goal was that they wanted to have a base armor that wouldn't need to be rebuilt every time they wanted to make a new piece of gear using that base armor. They wanted it to be more efficient. They want to build a base shoulder pad one time and use it however many times they wanted with no extra work in other pieces of gear. If changes needed to be made to that base, they needed to be able to fix the base once and have it affect all other pieces of gear using that base piece. Other goals included being able to work with and address older content down the road, and that artists needed to be able to change assets quickly without breaking anything or doing extra work. For example, in this system's most basic form, it works like this. I've recorded the audio for this video. It's done. But let's say I want to make some changes. Instead of re-recording everything over again and replacing it manually in my editing software, I can make my change in the audio, get rid of anything I don't want to or add anything I want to, and it will automatically update in my project. This is, at its most basic form, sort of how Bungie's system works. So instead of thinking of these characters as fully built already, they started thinking of characters like Legos, and thus, Mashup is born. Individual pieces, or bits, would be used to create different pieces of armor that an artist can mix and match, stuff like visors, belt buckles, whatever they wanted. They'd simply pick out pieces, Legos, from their stockpile, and build armor arrangements. Dies will control color, detail maps, and specular qualities. Each arrangement has a die for armor, cloth, rubber, or leather. Each character in the Destiny world is assigned a certain amount of game memory. By the way, this section gets a little more technical. Going beyond that, each piece of gear gets a specific amount of memory depending on your class. For example, the Titan's arms and chest get a greater memory chunk than other parts on the Titan because they are the most prominent feature on the Titan. 
The Warlock doesn't get as much memory dedicated to arms, it's put more into the chest because of their robe, but each class gets the same amount of memory. However, this is not something you will have to worry about personally, it is on Bungie's side of the game. This part is even more technical, Scott talks about how they create specular, which I'm not still 100% sure what that is. I think it might be about how light affects the colors of the dyes and the gradients of the dyes. It starts at 25 minutes and 30 seconds in the lecture. We're going to just skip over to the result, which shows a wide variety of colors and textures for Bungie to choose from. Originally, each player would choose three colors that would be assigned across their character. They didn't want, you know, every single color showing up. However, this needed to change. The visual impact of getting a new piece of gear wasn't enough for players to get excited about that new gear, despite a silhouette change. The human eye reads changes in color better than shape. Shape and color changes are needed for maximum impact. With both things changing on each piece of gear, players will really see when they have gotten a stronger piece of gear. Each tier of gear is assigned with a different color to make it more obvious that you've upgraded. The hunter cloak picture that leaked earlier is a great example of this system in action. The changes felt good for players and the artists. They created Mantini, which is another in-house program, to view these armor arrangements to check for color patterns along with any technical issues, like clipping in between gear. The rest of the video explores the overall difficulties Bungie experienced, what worked, what didn't, and where they're going to go from now. One of the main difficulties was that most of the artists were more comfortable with creating full characters as opposed to a modular system, which also took some fun out of the process. The other was that the tools that they were using were still in a work-in-progress mode, still very much in a beta mode, if you will. They weren't fully stable, which led to slowdowns in content creation. So what went right? Well, the thing works, so that's always a plus. The flexibility of the program really helped them streamline any issues. Fix one problem, and it's fixed everywhere else. So where do they go from here? Decals are something they want to incorporate into the die system. Right now, it seems like only the artists are able to place those decals in very specific spots due to the geometry of the characters and the memory issues, but as they work with the software more, they hope to get more user-created content involved as well. Another thing is the multi-platform development tools. They want artists to be able to focus on creating art, not worry about memory problems or development restrictions. They also want to expand the die system, more colors, more textures, etc. And that about concludes the lecture portion. The next part is about 15 minutes of questions that came from the audience, but we're not going to go over all of them. But I do want to go over three of them. The first is at the 44 minute mark, which basically asks what the actual player's involvement is in all of this customization. I'm just going to play the clip. So this is a really powerful tool for your side of the fence. Um, how does this level of customization and content generation trickle down to the player's ability to customize and, and leverage the amount of flexibility that you have? Um, the question was, uh, this is a really powerful system for us as content creators. How does that affect the players and how do they make use of it? Um, Right now, for the most part, it affects them in the fact that we can build a lot more content than we could otherwise. We can build a lot more armor sets, a lot more um, pieces of gear for them to choose from. Um, pushing forward, exploring the ideas of players being able to create their own arrangements and stuff is something we've definitely thought about and you know, I would personally love to explore, but it's a long ways out. We'll follow this up with another question asked in regards to players choosing color customization patterns question about the color customization. Uh, if I understand correctly, the, originally a player could choose three colors for their character and then you guys changed the system to colorize the gear so it would represent the different scale of uh, upgrades. Um, so does that mean that in the current design there is no player co color customization for their character? So the question is, um, we initially had it so that players could choose three colors and then we moved to a system where that, uh, where we established the colors to, to communicate the tier um, does that mean players can't customize their color? Um, so, uh, no. We, we, we definitely established what we call default dies for, system, for things, and um, the, the idea is that players uh, will be able to customize their color choices later on. You can take their upgraded gear and then tweak it from its current 
value, basically? Um, so I can't go into too much detail about this because it's actually uh, something that's still being worked on. Um, but uh, as I said, the idea is that players will have some control, for sure. And finally, we'll wrap it up with this question comparing Borderlands 2's random modular guns. Hi, uh, one quick question I had, because the system, it actually reminded me a lot of Borderlands 2's gun system, where they built completely modular guns, and so each player who started up their game was able to have like their own unique sniper rifle. Um, would this system allow for players to have like completely unique randomized helmets, or is everything built beforehand? So the question was, um, does the system allow for players to have completely unique randomized helmets um, or pieces of gear? Um, the answer is no, actually. And, and that was a very conscious decision on our part. Uh, we wanted artists to still maintain control of the overall design. Um, we wanted to try and make it as fast as possible for them to create something cool, but we didn't want it, we always wanted it to feel like it was a conscious decision that we put this piece with this piece. So the players actually creating their own gear seems a long ways away. Does this change your perception on the game and what you want out of it? I assume some people had to think that they'd be able to create their own gear in a way, but it really doesn't seem likely at the moment. Players still have some sort of color options available to them, but to what extent is really not known. I thought it would be a little weird to have players to be able to create and customize their gear so heavily if there were already loot drops that you'd be able to get within the game. So it's sounding like the customization options are really up to Bungie to create a ton of new gear for us to go loot. Well, that about wraps up the summary. If you followed me on Twitter, at Dado's Destiny, you would have gotten a link to the lecture as it became live. So be sure to find me there to stay up to date. As always, a positive rating on this video or any other videos I do is always welcome and very much appreciated, along with your comments on today's topic. As for what the immediate future holds, I'm not too sure. This lecture was the next thing on my list to cover, and now that that's done, we'll just have to wait and see what new information will spill out next. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.